Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Today is December 21st and I'm picking up where I left, left off in the last episode. We were just getting started on testing a new class called Save File, which is going to represent a save file for application, our application. So finally, finally, we're really getting into honest to goodness persistent stuff. And what I want to test is just whether or not the save file will create a file when told to save. And I think, and I ha wasn't sure how to, we need to save that file in a temporary location. I wasn't sure how to do that. I did some research, and what do you know, JUnit has this really cool temporary folder class that does exactly what we need. It's using something in JUnit that I'm not familiar with. It's, it's after my time, which is the rule annotation. And um, I have no idea how those work, and I think I need to spend some time to research it a little bit further. I do know that that was one of the things suggested for the swing testing, is that I use a rule. So I do need to go in and figure that out at some point. Um, I tend to be somewhat lazy about these things because uh, you, if you spend all your time researching, you never get any work done. So I haven't gone through and studied, studied this yet, but I, it looks like I need to because I think there's some, some cool stuff in there. So I think... I should be able to just say rule, well, this code right here, temporary folder, folder, equals new temporary folder. Wow, okay. And I'm going to call that tempter because I'm old-fashioned that way. And so our save file, let's see. Well, this will create files for us. What does get root do? The location of the temporary folder. Okay. And temporary folder extends external resource. I don't want it to create a file for me um, because I want the save class to create the file. So but it will return the root as a file. So I think what I want it to do um, so save file path that's going to be tempter dot get root um, test file dot well we'll just call it test file and let's see we'll need to import that and I've decided I do want this to take a path so we'll need that and then we'll create the save file and now we should uh, assume uh, test file does not exist how do we test to see if the file actually exists I'm not sure yet I'm sure this is really simple. File dot exists. Okay. I didn't use there is. Okay, so assume the file does not exist. And then save and file should exist. Uh, 
Yeah, that should test that save creates the file. Great. Uh, good. File should now exist. Perfect. So now in our save file, should be really straightforward, we're going to want to save that off. And here, I want to say path.create new file. New empty file. There is some more documentation on that. Let's take a closer look at it. Okay, so this returns false if the file already exists. Um, yeah, so now we need to test that save overwrites an existing file. Uh, for this one, I want to assert that the size of the file is zero. No, that's... File that length, okay? I love Google. So we're going to assert that the file should be empty. Now we need we're going to need to handle IO exceptions back to that one. Um, what kind of exception does this throw? Just IO exception. Or security exception, but um, I'm not going to worry about that. It's an unchecked exception, which presumably means that it should only occur if there's a programming error. I don't think Java's been very consistent about what's checked and unchecked, though. Um, so yeah, that's working. All right, so now And the neat thing about this temporary folder is it deletes, it cleans up after itself when the test ends, so it always kill, kills everything. That's, that's awesome. Um, let's factor out the temp file stuff. You know, I don't know if I need to... It used to be, back in the early days of JUnit, that you had to... that the class would only be instantiated once, and then all the methods would be called setup, method, teardown, setup, method, method teardown. I don't know if that's actually still true. Um, but because of that, 
I am I still do my initialization and setup rather than in, in the initializer. Um, that may not be necessary. If you know, please let me know in the comments. I could save myself some work. But, you know, c'est la vie. So, let's see, that should still work. Now let's create the the file. And uh, now we have to actually write some stuff to it. So um, now we got to deal with Java's very flexible but not super convenient IO stream stuff. Um, there's in IO, but I think that's I don't think that's actually useful. I think that's more asynchronous stuff. It's not more convenient. It's less convenient. I think. Um, just going to go with what I remember. So we're going to need a file writer Yeah, and that will take a path. Generally, you want to buffer these things. Yes, not in this case. And now I'm going to assert so this should say assumed setup file size. This file size setup assumption expected for was whatever it is. So we have to close that. I don't know if this is going to work. It's been a while since I've mucked around in the Java IO stuff. Oh, it's working fine. Great. And now we want to say save file.save. And we want to assert the file size. Uh, file should have been overwritten. Should have been overwritten, expected zero, was four. OK, so that's good. So now in our actual code, do we want to truncate it so how do we do that uh, it's all new IO stuff I don't think I want to do that Okay, this is all new I.O. stuff. Let's just make this simpler. Oh, 
What if we do that? That yeah, works great. Okay, so that's a bit cheesy, but we're making slow and steady progress on this. We'll pick up and do more next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will catch you next time.